morning all. Thank you for having me here today. Now, first time speaking in front of a camera, so for those that are uh, at home or in front of the computer, please go easy on me and go easy on the tweets and whatever else we spoke about before. So as Cara said, cash flow, the lifeblood of your business is what we're saying. Um, and in the context of growing your business. Quick disclaimer to keep our, uh, our um, compliance guys happy. And a little bit about, about Crow Horth. We are um, the largest provider of accounting and advisory uh, advice in Australia, uh, or to the mid-tier mid market. We're the fifth largest in Australia by revenue, um, behind, basically behind the big four. And we've got a network of, of over 80 offices um, around, the, around the country. So today's presentation, I'll um, touch on a little on what is cash flow. Uh, I mean, it really is quite a broad topic, so um, we could stand here and talk about it all day. And to, cap to try and capture it in half an hour is quite difficult, but we'll touch on what is cash flow, why is it so important in the context of your business, um, in keeping with the, uh, the medical theme and the, and the heartbeat, cash flow vital signs. Um, I'll touch on a, on a case study uh, for, a, for a client of mine and what to do when you have an issue within your business. So cash flow, and for the phonetically challenged, I've got the pronunciation up there for you. It's a noun, and according to our, our friends at Investopedia, it is revenue or expense streams that change the cash account over a given period. But in summary, it's really the inflows and outflows. Um, when you're monitoring your cash flow in your business, ideally we should be going more in depth and not just looking at or, or focusing on the cash inflows and outflows. We should be, um, you know, when you've done your business plan or as you're, as you're planning for the coming year or coming few years of growth in keeping with today's theme, growing your business, we should be really assessing um, globally your, your profit and loss, so your, 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 re your growth in revenue, how you're going to meet that with your, your expenditure, how that ties into a forecast balance sheet, and ideally it all intertwines with your cash flow as well. As I've said, it's the lifeblood of, of, of any business, big or small. It's how we survive and thrive. And, and really, in order to grow in business, your cash is, cash is king. We need to make sure that we are, uh, and I'll touch on it shortly, with our customers, but we need to be really focusing on collecting that, that cash. Quick show of hands as to um, who's currently experiencing cash flow issues within their, their business at the moment. There's a few hands. Keep your hands there. Those that haven't raised their hands, who has experienced cash flow issues in the past? So it's, it's pretty resounding. Uh, it, it is a major issue in business. Um, and that's consistent with this. So we had some, uh, there were some results there with a, the last two smart company Crow Hall with SME direction surveys. Um, December 12, it was number two on the worry list. And in November last year, it was number one. So it's clearly keeping us awake at night. So, just like human uh, vital signs, cash flow vital signs, I'm going to take you through in a second, and they're really top, top tips of things that we should be doing in order to keep our business healthy and growing. So firstly, planning and forecasting, it's really a must. If we haven't done it, please do it. Uh, if you're not sure where to start, speak to your accountant or your strategic planner or whoever you've got, your, your advisors, okay? We need to assess our growth plans. How much, how much do, we, do we need in the way of funding and when? Um, in growing our business, you're going to have huge amounts tied up in, uh, in, in your stock, 
and your and your debtors. Okay, so it's if you as uh, I'll reference back to Mike's presentation, but he spoke about that growth trajectory in the business where they went from two million to eight million dollars. They would have had a huge amount of working capital tied up in in uh, in their in their stock, be it whip or product, but also debtors. Um, so it, bear that in mind when you're growing. It's, it's, it's probably best to try and manage that growth. If you can't manage that growth and it gets a bit out of control, it's, uh, we, need to keep, we need to bear that in mind. And it requires constant monitoring. Don't set and forget. So uh, there's no point in doing a set of, uh, you, know, some, you know, some forecasts for the coming year or two years and putting it aside and off you go and, and looking back on it a year or two later. Look at it as you go. Um, and compare, compare your actuals with, with where you thought you would be and then work out why you're not there or perhaps you're a bit, perhaps you're a bit bullish, perhaps you're a bit conservative. But go back and reference back to where you thought you would have been. I've got there identifying funding requirements and getting the mix right. Um, I mean, again, this is a, an issue in itself, debt versus equity. Um, I mean, the key, the key difference being that with debt, uh, you are going to maintain the equity that you've, that you've grown in that business, but you're going to give away some sort of security to, to secure that debt through the financier. And you're going to have repayment requirements that you've got to factor into your cash flow. With equity, you're giving away some of that hard-earned um, value in the business that you have created. Uh, again, as Mike said, you want to try and, if, if you have to do that, do it in, on your terms. Um, but if the capital does get injected into that business, th there generally isn't a, uh, a requirement to re repay that. Next to your, or alongside your, your employees, your, your customers really are the major or your most important part of your business. So we need to get that right and look after them. Um, COD, um, you know, if you've got a business where, you're, where your customer is a COD, you're likely going to have a pretty good cash flow position. But then it creates a, a, a different set of issues because you've got all this excess capital or excess cash in your business. What do you do with it? Uh, do you take it off the table? Do you reinvest it into, into growing the business? Do you, um, you may have uh, some capital equipment that you want to purchase. Do you go and invest it in that? Or, or do you go and secure funding for that, for that equipment instead and use that capital for something else? Perform a due diligence. Perform your due diligence. So if you've got, what I mean there is, if you've got um, new, new customers and you are perhaps a little bit suspicious about or suspect about um, them being able to meet your, um, your invoices or your account, do some credit checks. Um, there are umpteen providers out there that do it for a pretty minimal sort of sum. Better doing that homework beforehand than, uh, than copying, copying on the chin when, you, when they're, they're into you for 20, 30 grand and you can't get the money out of them. Set expectations from the outset as well. So make it really clear what your terms are and make sure they understand that. Um, we don't want surprises, uh, and you don't want them having excuses either, so make sure you build that into when you're working with new customers. Invoice promptly and communicate. Again, Mike touched on it. <laughs> Stole my thunder a little bit. Um, uh, if, I mean, if we all know that if, if we receive an invoice then we're going to be, and it's prompt, shortly after a service or a, or a product is delivered, we're going to be more inclined to pay it there and then because it's fresh in our mind and we're, and we're happy. The same goes for your business and your customers. Invoice it promptly, be it if you're a service or a, or a, um, or a product-based business, um, you, you know, your work in progress or your, or your inventory. And also communicate. So um, back a step with new customers, if you're invo invoicing them for the first time, 
send it, send it to them and talk them through it. Um, don't just send it and sort of cross your fingers and hope they, uh, hope they pay. Talk them through it, make sure they're comfortable with it. And if they're not, then you know, how, can we, how can we fix it? Does it meet your expectations? It sort of it, it takes away that, that, uh, the, the chance for the, for the customer to make an excuse later when, when they can't pay or they don't want to pay. Incentivise where possible. Every time your customer pu pushes or drags you along, they're, they're using you as a bank, okay, and it's costing you money. So um, it, it's going to be horses for courses here. It depends on your business, how long your terms are, what sort of level of funding you have within the business, how expensive it, expensive it is for you. So it might be 1%, it might be 2 or 3% that you, that you say to the customer, if you pay within the next seven days, I'm going to lop off that percentage from your, from your total bill. That incentivises them to, to pay quickly. In reality, it's a pretty small cost to you and you get your money in the, in the bank quickly so that you can keep, keep growing. And don't be afraid to sack bad clients. Um, I've had um, lots of clients but lots of clients of mine have done this in the past with some of their customers. Um, don't be afraid to do it because it means you can focus on really servicing those customers that, are, that, that, that appreciate your business and, that, and, that like, and you like working with one another. Similar to your customers, it's important for everyone to understand suppliers, um, in particular payment terms. Um, if you've got a business that's, say for example, importing, you're going to have pretty strict terms uh, in that you might need to pay at point of order or upon the, the, the goods hitting the docks. Okay? Negotiate better terms. Um, and what I mean here is that you can do it, you can do it at the outset when you, when, you, when you want to work with a new supplier. Or as you've been working with a supplier and you've built trust and a relationship over time, don't be afraid to go and ask for better, to, for better terms. Okay? That's going to help your business in the context of cash flow. Same goes for banks. Um, you know, the, the bank could be your supplier of funding. Don't be afraid to ask for a discount in, in, in rates because you'd be very surprised as to um, how they react. Quite often it's, it's quite favourably. Monitor your inventory holdings, be it your work in progress as a, as a service provider or your, or, or your stock, your physical stock as a product seller. Um, as you're growing, and I've, I said it before, you're going to have a huge amount of working capital tied up in this area and quite often it is one of the largest assets within your business. So it's really important that we don't take our eye off, the, off inventory and you should be monitoring this most days of the week. Um, be really measured in, measured in how you're, if you're a product based um, business, be measured in how you're ordering. Don't go and over order for this and, and hope that you're going to go and sell this, this, uh, this excess that you, that you know you're going to have because it might end up being obsolete. You're better probably erring on the side of conservatism and running out than having all this excess stock that you've then got to go and discount and, and flog off at a at discount rates. Now this next point's a bit of a wish list um, for, for, growing, uh, for growing your business. Um, but where you can, try and maintain a buffer um, to cover off uh, or to, to get you through those tough times. Um, you never know when there's going to be a bit of a downturn or your customers might you know, um, peg back a little bit. Maintain that buffer so it can get you through that, that, that difficult time. But it, as I said, wish list, in reality, it's probably not going to be very easy as, you, as you're growing a business or as you're in your infancy. Similarly, um, set aside your, try and get into the habit of setting aside your GST, your PAYG, withholding your superannuation commitments in, in respect of your employees. Um, the ATO are a really expensive form of finance, um, well depending on what, what sort of um, funding you've got in, the, in your business, but historically they've been around the 12, 14, 15 percent mark at the moment, it's around about the 10 percent mark for interest. 
but it's not a good look if you want to go out and secure finance from, a, from an investor or a bank, especially the banks, they don't like it. They don't like when you've got arrears or if you've got a, a, a poor history with the ATO. So where you can try and set it aside in respect of the superannuation, um, super is generally due 28 days after quarter end. I'm not going to go into it into any more detail, but if you miss that, you start getting into the, the, the um, domain of having to voluntarily, voluntarily disclose to the ATO, and you potentially miss out on deductibility within your business. So it's a huge impact. It's really important to have accurate reporting within your business, and this flows straight on to my next point, um, cloud accounting, which really does provide real-time view of your financials. Um, there's a small stat there, and we're in, uh, we are, and I'm not in any, by any means aligned to uh, any one provider, but this is an interesting stat I found with zero. Small businesses with online accounting are getting paid 37% faster. And you might, you might ask, how the hell do they work this out? It's based on their database of customers and, and actual facts. Okay, so the reason for it is because it makes the, the cloud product, be it Xero, QuickBooks Online, MYOB, Reckon, the list goes on. They make it easier for your customers to pay you. Okay, so with invoicing capability, you can invoice a customer um, on the fly, be it from your smartphone, from your, um, your tablet, from your laptop, from your, wherever you are, you can invoice a customer. But on those invoices, it, um, they, there's capability for your customer to go and pay you. There are links on that electronic invoice that they receive. There are, there's capability within those systems to tell you when the customer has opened that invoice. So no longer have they got the excuse that they didn't receive it. Um, the list goes on. So the cloud accounting and the accuracy in your reporting is, um, well the, particularly the accuracy in reporting, it's really important that you're looking at true numbers and that you know your position at any point in time. And the deferred GST, um, this really is uh, um, one that's, that's really essential for importers. So for those that are importing, uh, are there any importers in the, in the room registered for deferred GST at all? Or? Oh, okay. Yeah. So effectively what happens if you, if you are purchasing, um, let's say you're in the business of uh, online furniture retailing, for example. Um, and you're, you're purchasing container loads of product in any given period. As you're purchasing it from your supplier overseas, it's not going to have any GST, but as it hits our shores, customs are going to hit you with GST. You need to pay that GST along with your freight forwarding costs at that point of release. So it's a huge cash impost on your business. Granted, you're going to get it back in that coming quarter uh, following the quarter in your, in your activity statement, but it's a big cost cash-wise to your business. The deferred GST does away with that um, and you can avoid, cu the cust customs don't hit you with that GST, but instead you pass that along to your, your customer. So it cuts out that whole process in a, in a way. So moving on to a quick case study, uh, and this is a, a, a real life, um, example that I've got here, and this is one of my clients, that's um, where we work with them on a weekly, uh, daily basis, but really we, uh, you know, monthly management meetings, quarterly financials, the works. Um, they're a boutique publishing business, and they have been, as a growing business, experiencing perpetual tight cash flow. Um, and because they've been so busy working in their business and they haven't taken that half a day a week to work on their business, they, have, they can't, they're finding it really difficult to, to assess what the reasons are and why, why it is they've got this, these cash flow issues. So as, a, as an outsider and as a third party, I've sat back and, and had a look at it all and, and realised that their existing revenue streams um, 
So their, their revenue streams are that they, they, they put these books together, participants um, pay a sum of money to partake or be part of the book. So they, they pay, it was 50% up front, 50% upon editorial or upon the book being printed. And it was really hampering their cash flow. So we spoke about how, how big an impact would it, what sort of impact would it make on your business, but also on your customers if you were to say, we want 60% up front, and we're not talking cattle stations when we're, when we're dealing with these customers. 60% up front, 40% at the tail end. Um, they sort of put it out there with a few of their customers and they said, no problems. They've now done that and it's, and it's had a huge impact on their cash flow. Um, and another thing is they've got this, um, we've introduced, or looking to introduce this new revenue, revenue line and it is a, a COD basis. So they're going to have online content, subscriber based, uh, it's really not costing them anything to have it there, but they're going to get money in the door for re really for doing nothing. The content's already there. So I ask that you look at your businesses and think about different ways in which you can try and improve your cash flow through a different product line or a different, a different way of doing things. So the result for my client has been that they've got improved cash flow and they, they can now sleep at night because in reality it does keep owners awake. So what should you be doing if you've got an issue um, with cash flow? Well, firstly, um, we should be talking with our... Um, making sure that we're doing all these things that, we've spoke, that I've spoken about. And, and, and the list can go on. I mean, they're, they're probably the major things that we should be doing. Um, there are other bits and pieces that we can probably be adding to the mix as well, but make sure we're doing those as a minimum. Speak to your accountant or advisor and make sure that you are, um, you know, if they can help in any way, they should be doing that. And if you haven't got an accountant or advisor, I'm more than happy to talk to you afterwards. <laughs> so thank you to Smart Company and Officeworks for uh, having me here today and, um, and I look forward to taking some questions afterwards.